Hey guys, welcome back. It's me again, Ian, and I'm back with more Audi TT Mark II content. So in this video, what we'll be looking at is upgrading the puddle lights. Now I've just come over here onto my driver's side. You can see the nice little glow coming out from the light. Now I'm just going to take it out so I can show you the difference in the units. So with this down light, I had retrofit that and coded it into the door module. So we'll also have a look at how that's done as well. I've bought some genuine Audi downlight upgrades. Part number, whoops. It's on the back there. We'll just quickly jump inside to have a look at the differences in the units. Apologies for being so quiet before. It was early in the morning and I didn't want to make too much noise, but I did want to just show you guys a little glow that these, um, puddle lights give. Uh, this unit that I was using is actually from uh, Passat B6 or R, it was from an R36 actually. And the glow that's inside is just one of those LED uh, canvas friendly glow. I'm just trying to open it up here for you so I can show you. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to show are three of the three different kinds of down lights that you can get or puddle lights and that is the sort of older style one that I've got here and you can see that it's got like a metal surrounding on it and just note the plug size here it's quite big and flat so that's one style of puddle light that you can get. The one that's a little bit more platform specific is this one here. All right. So with that one, you can see that it's got like a plastic black housing. And I'll put the part numbers for these down in the description below so that you know what you're looking for if you want to do this installation. The main thing that's different here is that the plug is a really small two pin plug and the LED is part of the board inside. It's not like a bulb, like in this one here, this bulb is actually removable and I'll show you that um, in, a little, in a little cutaway. Now what I'm installing today are the genuine Audi LEDs and you can see by looking at the uh, sticker on the back that's the part number and it's going to be the Quattro style logo that will be projected and I'll just show you the difference here with these ones apart from coming in a nice box you can see that they are a lot bigger in size than the other ones they have that um, quality sticker on them. There's a bit of a heat sink on the back here as well. And there's a little description. Oh, a little bit too close. There's a little description there on the side uh, of what kind of projector it is. You'll also see on the bottom here that there's that little lens. And it also only has the small two pin plug as did the other one. So just stacking them up, you can see there are a few differences there. The main thing being the genuine one here. Being taller, it has a built-in heat sink and obviously has the projector on the bottom and the plug sizes as well. So just to let you know, all of these are compatible with the TT. It's just the plug shape that differs. Now, just to get a closer look of each of the different kinds of units, this is the metal backed one with the bigger style plug, big and um, flat plug. You can see that 
that metal part comes off and inside I've just got like a regular, uh, usually this would be a halogen T10 bulb, but this is an LED unit which works quite well and you can see there's a resistor in there too so it's CAN bus friendly. So that was the light that you saw when I was out at the car in the morning. Uh, the next unit, I'll do a comparison of these once I've changed the plugs over because you can clearly see the plug size is different. So with this one, when you open it up, you can see it consists of a board with the little LED in there. So it's all kind of integrated into one. There's nothing, there's no bulb that you can remove or change around. Finally, we've got the OEM projector style one. I'm not going to open this up because they are quite expensive. Uh, again, so it's got the same style plug as the previous uh, regular puddle light, but obviously it's got the projector lens there. And you can see the build quality here is quite good with a heat sink and you've got a little Torx, looks like T5, I think it's quite tiny. Let's get that to focus so you can see. So you can see that Torx T5 um, screw in there and that's the OEM projector. I really want to talk about how these are worth the investment over the sort of cheaper ones that you can get, which has a small plug and that wider old school plug shape. I've had experience with those uh, cheaper ones that you can get from like Wish or AliExpress, eBay even, and they're not that great. After a while, the, uh, the projection does tend to degrade and the sharpness of the image isn't as good. So we'll have a look and see what these look like once they're installed. Before being able to install the new projector puddle light, I'll need to swap over the plugs here to the smaller one. So that's nice and easy. It's just two wires. And here's a comparison of what they looked like before with the wider plug style, LED bulb, and the projector down light. Now that's installed, let's take a look and see how it looks. So obviously it's in the middle of the day, but you can faintly make the outline here as I move the door in and out. So light output is excellent. Righto, so now that the puddle lights have been installed, what we'll do is have a look at the VCDS coding and how to turn them on or off. So where we want to go is here and we'll do the driver's door. So it's door elect electrics driver side and I've got my other camera just pointing towards the puddle light. So you'll be able to see exactly how it turns on and off when I do this adjustment in coding. I'm just going to clear this because that's the error from when it was unplugged and the car was powered on. So we go into coding, we can see here there's going to be a whole bunch of options. Just drag this along to the side and where's the option here for the puddle lights here. So door exit, warning light installed. So that's plus 64 at the end value here. So I'm just going to remember what this is so I can go back to it. Okay, so 4701. Now to turn it off, we'll subtract 64, which is 4637. So we just go adjust here, six, three, seven, and do it. And you'll see that the puddle light on the driver's side has turned off. Now to turn it back on, simply go to coding, add that 64 again. So 4701 is the coding to turn it on. And when I press do it, it should 
flick back on again. There we go. So it's super easy and the procedure for the passenger door is exactly the same. Go in. Maybe, yep, did exactly the same thing. I powered it on with nothing plugged in, so then it's pulled up a code. Go into coding and it's the same. So we can see door exit slash warning light installed, 64. So you just subtract 64 from there to turn it off and then turn it back on plus 64. So obviously if you don't have the putter lights installed, you'll just be adding 64 to activate that. And I'll show you the pins to use in your door control module, which is dependent on the part number that you've got in your doors. So we'll have a look at that now. Once you've stripped your door back, you want to get to the gray plug, which is in the door control module. This is a 32 pin plug. Then you'll have your projector puddle light, which has two pins. So we'll look at the different pin number locations here. You can see the gray one is marked 1 to 32 and the projector 1 and 2. If you have a pre-facelift car, then most likely this is the wiring you'll need to follow. The brown is ground. And if you've got a facelift car, you're going to follow this wiring diagram where brown is at 19 and power is at 18. Now, if you wanted to install the warning lights, which are on the spine of the door card, now's the perfect time to do it. All you'll need to do is splice into your brown ground and power to give power to that warning light. Now that's all done, let's have a look and see how these compare. So on the passenger side here, on the left side of the car, this is the OEM puddle light LED unit with that black housing. And you can see on the left side that there is the warning light that's installed. Usually that's just a reflector. Switching over to the driver's side, this is where the projector light is. You can see that Quattro logo is being projected very nicely on the ground. It's nice and bright compared to the OEM puddle light. And it stands out quite a lot. I really, really like this look. So just having a look in at different angles. You can see it really nicely matches the look and feel of the Audi TT Mark II. So what do you think? All right guys, so there you have it. That's the installation and coding for the Audi TT Mark II puddle lights. So this mod can be done to any Audi TT Mark II. You just have to have the CDS or equivalent to be able to code them in and activate them as you saw in the guide. Mm -hmm. So you've got three options as I showed. You've got the lights that have the halogens in them. Make sure if you're upgrading to a, an LED bulb, you're using one that's CAN bus friendly. It's going to be distinguishable by that long flat plug. And then you've got the LED units. So they have that single LED in them with the small plug. And finally, you've got the best option that I think is the most uh, viable long-term option and highest quality option with the Audi OEM projector lights, which you can get in different styles. So I've got the Quattro logo. You can also get the, I believe, Audi Sport ones. You can get the Audi rings. There may be others available out there as well. And I'll try and get those part numbers and pop them in the description below. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you coming along and watching my videos. If you like my content, please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.